Hey guys. Hello and welcome back to our continuing discussion of Three Flavors of Dead People. This is our second video where we are discussing what happens to the soul after a person transitions into the afterlife. And the reason that we're doing this is to hopefully help you better understand the different types of beings you can encounter when conducting a seance, channeling, or other sort of necromantic rite. And this is really important because many of us are trying to reach out to the people that we once knew in life and are frustrated because maybe the connection doesn't seem real, it's not authentic, or we're failing to connect with the person we thought we were. And in the meantime, I'm Kedrick Olson, author of Runes for Transformation, founder of Galdracraft. You may know me from my rune work for the Norse mysticism, but another aspect of my life is I grew up dealing with spirits. I very haunted house, going to seances regularly. And so I have a lifetime of experience of working with various disembodied entities. And I'm trying to bring this back out into the open to help other people recognize what goes on with the soul and communication with the dead. And remember, necromancy is a Norse practice. So all of this frustration when trying to reach out to a person and you can't reach that person does result in some heartbreak. When we fail to make contact, things didn't go as planned. Now, sometimes there is a connection and things do go very well. I've encountered many people that have relayed wonderful, long-lasting interactions with people that they once knew in life that are producing information that can be verified in the real world. However, that's not the normal case. There are many more things that go on in a ritual setting when people try to connect with the old ties and it doesn't work. And we also need to understand the importance of being able to let go, to let the other person move on. And that is what kind of lies at the heart of this discussion. Which brings us to the second flavor of dead people, intact souls. We talked last time about revenants. When a soul encounters a traumatic situation like death, it can fragment. And a piece of that soul is stuck repeating a moment in time over and over and over and over. Meanwhile, the rest of the person could have moved on in their afterlife or... Or maybe they lived a very spiritual life. They were very good about their spiritual practice. They knew death was coming up and they were prepared for it and they could remain coherent. They could remain solid and whole as they transition to the other life. This is an intact soul. It's the result of a person who's engaged in a life of spiritual practice. They create a state of coherence throughout all of the soul parts. And when they transition to the afterlife, they were aware of it. Now, maybe they even learned how to explore through astral projection, through out-of-body experiences, dream work, shamanic traveling. Maybe they had some previous near-death experience, so they were familiar that there is an afterlife. They were familiar with the landscape and how to continue. But in any case, they did their work. They made it through the transition of death fairly intact, if not wholly intact. And the moment of death wasn't maybe that bad for them. So if they fragmented, they only did a little bit, but they were able to move on. Now, another thing that happens with these people is they're able to slough off all of the attachments and energy patterns that were not with them, that were not who they were at the authentic level. Remember, we talked about that similarities attract and perpetuate, and we tend to bring on attachments and energy patterns that are not us, but they reflect our emotional and energetic state. And when a person transitions to the afterlife, they have that opportunity to slough off these things. They're free from who they may have appeared in life. And I really, we're going to come back to that concept later. But when you encounter an intact soul, they're free from who they appeared to be when they were alive. Now, what you need to know about that is during our life, we gather so many attachments, external influences, energy patterns. We accumulate so many of these that we, more often than not, tend to live in an inauthentic life. We project on the world the accumulation of work from these attachments. And because so many people aren't doing their spiritual working, you wouldn't believe how common it is that we're actually interacting with a person's attachments and projections from those attachments rather than the person themselves. Now, when a person dies and they stay intact, they're able to slough off these attachments and you actually may not recognize who that person is. Yeah, you may have only known the projections and attachments, not the authentic person at the soul level. 
And another thing that happens to an intact soul is they move on in their afterlife. They engage in new projects. They do a whole lot of self-work. And they transform into something and someone that you actually may no longer know, may no longer recognize. And so when you reach out to these people and you make contact, it may seem like you've actually contacted the wrong person or that maybe they're deceiving you in some way. And this is not necessarily the case. This is the person that you once knew, but they've changed. They left their old world, their old ways behind. And unfortunately, you are not a part of that process. So the best thing to do in these cases is wish them well, let them go, and move on. Move on with your own spiritual workings. Do your own work. I know this is a quick, short, easy video, but I want to give you that quick introduction to intact souls before we move on to the next flavor of dead person. And hopefully you found this information useful. There is more to come because the next video, we're going to be exploring what happens to all of these pieces and parts that were sloughed off from, from an intact soul when they find the power and motivation to persist themselves as an apparent intact being. And so if you like what you're learning, please click like and subscribe and please share this video with other people who you know we're going to benefit from this information. In the meantime, if you're ready to learn more, go deeper into these workings, just follow the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Hail.